Welcome back, Acorn fans. Sorry for the accidental switch off. I was trying to change the wording on what was going on for the game, but I accidentally clicked the close button on OBS. That is the worst misclick I have had. Actually, the second worst misclick I had. The worst one was I accidentally clicked stop streaming when I was trying to reinitialize the audio, and there was a delay, and then ended up crashing OBS altogether. But this was still pretty bad. I apologize. So for anyone watching the stream, sorry about that. For anyone watching on YouTube, well, it doesn't matter because it's, it's cut into separate videos anyway. Anyway, it is Mon Cookie versus Rockmox on Felsing Inferno for the next game. Let us begin. Well, Mon Cookie is starting out in the southeast corner of the map, while Rockmox starting out in the southwest corner of the map. Rockmox is... Both players are going for Species Selector. A... Lazy and not particularly safe choice, I'm afraid. I really can't say anything positive about it. There is nothing good there. It just sort of spins. But I think they might be... Okay, there we go. They're actually doing something. Mongoogie going for Vekir and Rockmox going for CISO. And I wonder if eventually players will start picking... Nah, I don't think they will. I don't think players will start picking their species really quickly to avoid me making that stupid joke. But if they do, I don't know how I'll feel. Anyway, Rockmox going very quickly for 2Q Plasma. He's going for Quick Factory as well. Looks like he's going to go for Rapid Lancers. Just rushed heavy with Lancers, knowing Rockmox. That's not unusual. Monkuki, on the other hand, well, actually hasn't let anything spawn in yet. What the heck is Monkuki doing? No, really, what is he doing? Monkuki's stuff should have spawned in by now. Okay, there we go. Now it's spawned in. Don't know what he was waiting for. He keeps pausing. Must have been doing something outside of the game in the meantime. Anyway, Rockmox... Never mind. Okay, that was actually a mistake. He does have it on Liquid Crystal. What he's going to do with that, though, has yet to be seen. He was planning on building a factory, but no, going for the economy instead. So he is actually going to be a bit safer than I initially anticipated. Well, Monkuki is, as usual, going for a 3 infantry rush. Because that is what Monkuki does. That's what Monkuki always does. So Rockmox has factory set up, and we have opening shots being fired. Shinveer ultimately being the only survivor of that attack, which is a little bit unfortunate for Monkuki, although admittedly the Shinveer is the most important of the three, because it does allow for the foundation rush to happen. But yeah, that, that Zionveer and Tethveer just died pretty horribly, and I apologize, they're not the most visible, but yeah, they just... Zionveer goes first, then Tethveer, and Shinveer survives in order to get rid of that Marine. Looks like Mongoogie... Rockmox is actually trying to re-micro this. Moving the special ops back, that's going to make him win the fight, I think. That Shinveer, I don't see as being able to actually get through this. No, it's just... Everything's chasing after that special ops. Rockmox perfectly re this, but Mongoogie is well behind there. Actually, not even going for that. Gonna go for main base. Gonna go just for Shinveer, Tethveer moving forward. Zionveer staying in the main base, so ultimately the Shinveer and Tethveer are going to die horribly, and the Marine is going to enter Mongoogie's base, invade it, and start dealing some damage. But Monkuki should have either a depot up or at least his Zionveer and a foundation up in time to block off that marine and ultimately get out of there. Shouldn't be a big deal for Monkuki. Five Liquid Crystal RPs are up by the three minute. Well, is that three minute mark? Three minute mark now, but that's not where we're actually worried about. Monkuki is at the three minute mark, while Rockmox at the one minute mark is. Or 121 mark. Is only going for four. Four and zero. Sending in another Marine. I think he's going to go for Proxy. I'm not 100% sure. He is sending a Special Ops back, but I think he's going for Proxy. Yeah, it looks like it. The Shinveer is still up. Okay, the Tethyr has gone down. And Shinveer retreating. Monkuki is forcing... Er, should say. Rockmox forcing Monkuki to retreat. Monkuki is getting out of there. Rockmox... Is he going to go for Proxy? I just really want to know. This Marine here, I think, is proxying up. Yeah. That Marine looks like it's probably going to Proxy, but I don't know for sure. Because no orders have been sent so far. Monkuki just looks to be positioning for a proxy. Nothing in his main base. Nothing in the Marines and Special Ops. And Rockmox is a very aggressive player. He, that's what he's known to do. And there's the foundation to get rid of the Marine. Though, given that there are now two Marines and a Special Ops that are going to be coming in. The Special Ops having fully healed itself. Ah, not quite proxy, but definitely a forward factory being built up. And... And it is going to be... 
it is going to be, well, it's going to be just tough for Monkey to get out of this. Honestly, Monkey does have a depot coming up. There it is. There's that depot, the 240 mark. This is going to be for healing for a while. Maybe Aerial Control Center eventually. Probably for healing. Possibly Slipgate down the line. We'll see what's being built up with that, though. This is three minutes in the game, and Monkuki is, is currently five and one. Five Liquid Crystal, one Q Plasma with a Foundation and a Depot. The Depot just being built up a little earlier than usual, but on Felsic Inferno, it's a very rush-heavy map, so a little earlier than usual is actually on time. Usually it's around the 330 mark or so, and that's actually when it's done. Zion Pulsar coming up with very quick skip teleport. Monkuki going for that skip teleport right away. In order to attack, skip back, jump into the depot, and heal up. But it's still going to be another 30 seconds, and in that time, looks like Rockmox is pushing forward to attack. In fact, Rockmox will hit before Skip Teleport is done, just or just at the time it's done. Which means no charges, and there comes the attack, is incoming. Rockmox setting up, getting rid of that first foundation, so the healing will not be available. Right off the bat, drops the healing, starting to attack the ATHCs, which are going to go down very quickly. Another Zion Beer has been built as well, which can jump into the depot to become a Zion Pulsar, or will just build RPs. That works too. Planning for a bit of the later part of the game, while Rockmox, on the other hand, in his main base, has no fa has no armories. His infantry is just the starting infantry. The starting two Marines and one Special Op, and if he loses both Marines, he's going to have to rely on Max to get his back on track. And only has four Liquid Crystal RPs. This is kind of all or nothing right now for Rockmox, and it's turning into nothing. The Lancer is about the only chance, and even then, that's not going to work. It might kill a Zion Pulsar. Luckiest thing it could do is kill a Zion Pulsar. If it manages to do that, it will die to the Zion Veer that drop out of there. And the Shin Veer is going to be a problem. A okay, major problem. And one of the special ops does go down. Marine also goes down. This is the edge of the unplayable pass, by the way, so no changes are going to happen. No chrono porting is available right now, so the edge of the unplayable pass is the only thing that happens. What happens there is what's going to happen during the game. Nothing can be changed. Another Lancer coming in. Rockmox continuing along with this, but a Teth Pulsar has been built up to counter out that Lancer. We'll do a perfect job, and we'll get rid of the second Lancer afterwards as well. Rockmox can't escape with that. And the Zion Pulsar teleporting in gets rid of the Importer. Rockmox jumping back to the five minute mark right at the edge of the Implayable Past. Building up yet more Lancers, but that Teth Pulsar is going to tear apart all of them. And if it goes down, well, Teth Veer. And honestly, Monkey is just going to heal it up anyway. He's going to drop it into the depot. Once it gets here, jumps into the depot, back to full health, and ready for round two as that Lancer comes in from Monkuki's, sorry, from Rockmox's base. Another Lancer comes in right as the Shin, as the Teth Pulsar finishes healing, and right as the Shinveer is ready to attack, I was about to say for earlier, but the Shinveer does go down. Still, Monkuki just needs to weather the storm, and honestly, has already destroyed Rockmox's infrastructure. There is a factory, and mechs are possible. Not forthcoming, though. Rockmox not building any mechs, surprisingly enough. Not trying to rebuild this. Not trying to send any... He has a Marine, though. That's why. But no Marines or mechs being sent over to the northwest side of the map to try to build up a hidden expansion. Everything's pretty obvious. Mongoogie can fairly easily jump through here. Just get, needs to get Skip Teleport. And once he's done... On all of his units, I should say. Not just the two that he has already. Or the one, actually, he has already. Get Skip Teleport on all of them. And there's the Teth Pulsar getting Skip Teleport. This second Zion Pulsar does not have it. But if it has it, it will be very useful if it does. Because with that skip teleport, it can get rid of the lance. It can get in with the Zion Pulsar, eliminate the Lancers, and that'll be basically it. There's nothing that Rockmox has that's going to be effective. Now, Rockmox getting a couple of importers. The Zion Pulsars come in here. They will tear apart the importers without issue. And the Lancers are in place, but still 3 and 1. Okay, 3 and 2 compared to 6 and 4 now. Okay, Mongoogie is building up for Gate Tech. He is getting gay tech. He has enough resources in total. And getting the 5 Q Plasma RPs, that is very likely to be gay tech. He's not going for housing class research, so yeah, that's that's what we're going to see. Because that will give him skip teleport, if nothing else. And the Teth Pulsar, just ready to skip in. Looks like he's trying to trick Rockmox into thinking that it's safe to just go for it. That the Teth Pulsar is not nearby, and that he can just send in a Lancer to deal with the Zion Pulsar. I think that's what Monkey is trying to do. He might actually just be making a slight mistake, but I guess I'm going to go with him playing the long con because that's that seems like something Monkey would. Well, that seems like thing that Monkey should do. We'll see. Here comes the Lancer. Well, here was coming the Lancer, but we jump back about 20 seconds. No, not 20. 10. 
Jump back 10 seconds, but now back into when the Lancer attacks. And that Tusk Pulsar not jumping in. In fact, at the same time, a Lancer in Rock Mox, sorry, Monkey's main base from Rock Mox. Going down to a Tusk Pulsar. This second Tusk Pulsar not saving a Zion Pulsar friend. Why Monkey has not done that is beyond me, but I think that Monkey was just not paying attention to that. We'll see though. Now is the pretty much the only chance he has to do it. Why is he not sending this? To, to send it in. Why? Why are you not sending this in? Just teleport it in. That would do the trick. That would get rid of the Lancer right away. But no, this test pulsar unfortunately not being sent in. I don't know if Monkey was planning on doing that, but Monkey cannot take advantage of that now. Hasn't built Gate Tech either. I don't, did Monkey disconnect? Monkey did not disconnect. No, Monkey is still connected to the game. And that Test Pulsar able to do its job. Okay, there we go. Now it's teleported in. Second iteration over. Teleported in right at the end. Bubble Fast Edge. And no, nothing at all is going to counter it. There's a Test Fear here. Just out of the Test Pulsar. The Test Pulsar did die, but the Test Fear will have no problem getting to the Lancer. Will take some damage, but Test Fear are the strongest, at least by cost, anti-air units that Vecure has. They're also the ones with the longest range, so a bit of a range advantage on that. Still, the point is, Rock Mox... Actually, desperately getting an importer over in the north, or sorry, the center east side of the map, north of both bases. But really, Monkuki is way ahead. And getting Gate Tech, there we go, there's Gate Tech. Researched it about half a minute ago. And we'll be finishing up in about 10 seconds. <clears throat> so this is pretty much game, actually. Once once the factory goes down, there's not much that Rockmox can do. He's holding on, but. Not by much, although, wow, Macrofab coming up for Rockmox, north of Monkuki's base. There is the proxy. The proxy has been built. I don't think Monkuki is even aware of this. He has no comm hubs near there, no units are scouting up to the north. He had sent a unit over to the north, the Zion Veer, over to expand, but that did not spot the mechs. So, Rockmox, he's got a bit of a chance here. Not quite over yet, though admittedly, it is one shot. Probably going to be... Oh, it's going to be Mar tanks, yes. I was going to say probably going to be ground units, twin Mars, but there's no ground units, so twin Mars are out of the question. Pure Mar tank seems the only option, but then again, Gate Tech, Aerial Control Center, Slipgate, yeah, there's not much to be said here other than Rock Mox, last ditch effort is not going to work, unless he goes for frigates. If he goes for frigates, then there's a chance, but he's going for Mar tanks, in which case there isn't one. There, There's really nothing that Rock Mox has at the moment that is going to win. He's trying. He really is trying, but it's not, unfortunately, enough. Down goes the factory. The Macrofab is halfway done that first Mar tank, and once Monkey finds the proxy base, it really comes down to time, but even then, Rockmox only has enough resources to build up either, well, half a dozen Mar tanks, which is a decent amount, but not a huge amount, or build up. Well, actually, hold that thought. We do have a Chronoport coming in here. Chronoporting back the Zion Pulsar, or a Zion Pulsar, not. Is that the one that was. I don't know if that was the one that was back here beforehand. Well, yeah, it was one of the skip teleports, so it should, in theory, skip into the base and annihilate everything, actually making this entire base moot. If that Zion Pulsar successfully goes back here in Chrono with the Chronoport and ends up dealing with this base, then yes, Monkuki will just win the game by Rockmox not even having this proxy. We'll see, though, once the blue time wave comes along. But the proxy has been found regardless, and a Chronoport is very likely the Shin Pulsar, or sorry, Shin Church jumping back here, gunning Chronoport. Gonna deal with that in the past. Very likely to do so, at least. And where is that Chronoport coming in? There it is. There's the pause. And the order being sent. Where's, there's a the second order for the attack. And down that Shin Tercher goes into the past. Or down time it goes. Getting rid of that base before it even becomes a problem. Though, unfortunately, targeting the Macrofab and probably... No, will not to kill the Macrofab before the Macrofab is built up. The Macrofab builds up too quickly for Shin Tercher to deal with. Or a single Shin Tercher to deal with. Would need a couple. But even then, the Chronoport are back, Zion, Pulsars, dealing with the entire base. So Rock Mox doesn't have enough resources to actually do anything with. And even trying to get to the Slipgate is of no use at all whatsoever. That Shin Churcher basically will annihilate, eventually, Rock Mox's entire proxy base. And that is game. There's not much more to be said about that. Rock Mox has... He's lost the game. I mean, there's expansion in the northeast, there's the fact that this proxy base has been discovered. There's the fact that there is a chronoported back Shin Turcher, which is going to jump back to that. To the 10 minute mark, when that Shin Turcher chronoported... Oh no, not even Shin Turcher, Zion Pulsar's chronoporting back. Does not matter, that is game. Rock Mox throws in the towel, and... We'll have another replay for you in just a moment. It'll be once again Monkuki, this time it will be Monkuki and... Oh, Monkuki and Elliot N, also known as 
Edged D&D, who will be playing on Island, a map I have not seen in forever, because, well, it's really open. It's actually really tricky to play because of the openness in the map. We'll see how the players manage with it, though, so stay tuned for that. We'll be back in just a moment.